Hello there guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Matt and today I'm going to be talking about how to make a concrete worktop surface. This is going to be for an outdoor barbecue so it's going to have a hole in the middle. It's going to be reinforced along the edges to make sure that, that hole stays strong and then we're going to be using a black pigment to make it slightly darker than normal concrete and an impregnated high temperature food safe sealer that has no solvents in it so it's going to be a nice sealed surface that can withstand any weather conditions and it can be used in hot applications. So keep watching and I'll show you how to make the mold and then we'll go through the whole process. So for all the tools and products you can see in this video you can find them all in the links in the description below but now let's get on with making the mold and I'll show you how it's done. So we're starting off by using a track saw to cut the mold to size this is two meters by 840 and then using strips to make the thickness of the mold actually 40 mil exactly and we're using a pilot hole that is very similar to the screw size we're using otherwise the MDF can expand when you screw in. So you can see here I've just gone around the outside dropping in screws every 25 centimeters or so make sure that the wood was flush up against the bottom there basically every time you go along here and drop the tape measure in you can see See that it's 45 millimeters. So now I'm making a quick jig out of a piece of cardboard and a pen and a pencil and we're basically going to stab a pencil into a piece of 50 millimeter insulation and then draw the radius of the circle around with a pen and now I'm going to cut it out with a jigsaw to a roughly the right size and then using a sanding block to sand the sides of the mold to make sure it's perpendicular to the actual mold surface we're going to be sticking it to and it's nice and smooth, just hoovering it off now and using a smooth bit of tape, you can use any old tape really just as long as the finish that you get is what you want as the final mold finish so we've got a nice smooth finish there with a bit of sellotape so I'm now using my trusty hem with a hoover which I'm sure everyone's used once in their life and just marking out the position of the cutout and gluing it down nice and firmly with some really strong adhesive and then you can obviously see that we've got some quite thin sections there with that cut out in position. So I'm using two lengths of 10 millimeter rebar on the edges and some steel mesh in the flat sections to make sure that everything stays nice and strong. But that's enough of me talking. Let's go for the entertainment break. <laughs> This part isn't 100% necessary, but you can use a bit of masking tape or frog tape to mark out the exact positions of the silicon bead that you want, and it'll give you a nice clean finish with the least mess possible. But like I said, it's not 100% necessary, you can just use a silicon bead, then wipe your finger along it afterwards and keep a bit of kitchen towel nearby and just keep wiping your finger. It just won't come out as clean, it's a little bit more messy. And now I'm just going around the cutout in the centre and using pretty much any silicon you want on this. It doesn't really matter if it's neutral cure or acetoxy on the mold because it won't be sticking around the concrete for very long. Acetoxy silicon cures a lot faster. Now you can see how clean the finish is when you just take the masking tape away. And I think that came out pretty good. So now you just need to create yourself a nice level surface because it will affect the way that the concrete sits in the mold if it's poured into something that's not level. I'm putting it on a pallet here because I'm shipping it to an eBay customer. Now I'm using Spain's finest olive oil for this mold release, but you can use pretty much any cooking oil that you want. <gasps> Just make sure that you buff it off properly and there's no residue left on the surface. We've got some high strength concrete and we're using a plasticizer to make sure that the concrete has good flowability for as long as possible. Now I'm mixing the concrete into the cement mixer dry with 14% pigment relative to the actual cement that's in the bag. You can see this calculation in the description below. So the first pour, I'm trying to get a little bit more wet so that it fills the surface. So you can see here, I've made the mixture a little bit more wet than normal. So it runs nice and smoothly. So now it's time to place the concrete into the mold nice and carefully. We've got a pigment in there now so you can see it's nice and black and we're going to pat it down with our hands to make sure it's consolidated up against the mold surface. We can put the reinforcement on top of that and we don't need to put anything in there to space it out because the aggregate that's in the first layer will hold it away from the surface of the mold. Now you can use a straight edge or a plastering derby like I'm using here to flatten off the concrete up against the edges that we made at the start to get the exact thickness that we need for the worktop. Now it's time to vibrate the concrete. Try and get some help from this because it's not really that fun and it takes quite a long time and it's very tiring. Try to use an SDS drill for the edges and you can get quite a lot of air bubbles up just by shaking the mold up and down. Then just take a trowel and smooth off any unwanted lines that you've got left on the surface as this is how it will look once it's cured and then cover it over with a plastic sheet. Leave the worktop to cure for three to four days under the plastic sheeting and keep it hydrated with water once it's solidified just to make sure it doesn't crack during the curing process. Then take a sanding block and some 40 grit sandpaper to sand the underside of the worktop, especially at the edges as this will create the final thickness of the worktop.
Then just take your time flattening and sanding off the underside of the worktop as much as you possibly can because when it's flat and level, it makes it much easier to install into your final position, especially if it's in a kitchen where there's one or two millimeters tolerance. Then broom off the dust from the underside of the worktop and make sure it's thoroughly cleaned with water as this will be the last time that you see it. Now it's time to break out the insulation and you can either use a broken broom like I'm using here or you can use a chisel, any object will work as long as you don't go too close to the edges as it will damage the inner edge. Like you did with the underside and the edges, it's now a good opportunity to sand the internal edge here to make sure that there's no pressure points or pinpoints when you install the worktop. This will stop it from cracking if it's sitting on one small little sharp edge. Now give it a thorough clean and it will be time to flip the thing over. Flip the worktop over, keeping the mould attached to the worktop as this will protect the outside edge as you turn it and get some help for this as the worktop will be pretty heavy. Shuffle it back and then set it down. Take a screwdriver and remove all the screws and now it's time to demould the most satisfying part. Check out that clean and smooth dark concrete surface and that's what you get when you spend the time vibrating the concrete worktop well. So straight out of the mould, we've got a completely smooth surface. You can see here, these are just wet spots. These edges are beveled with the silicon that we had. And you can see on the inside edges here, the bevel on this edge is really, really good. And the surface finish is just as smooth as the tape we used. Very happy with that. Take the time now just to clean the area that you're working in so that no unwanted dust or dirt gets on top of the worktop as you're wet polishing it. Start with a clean bucket of water and some 12,000 grit wet and dry paper or silicon carbide paper. You can even work your way all the way up to 5,000 grit and use an electric wet polisher to speed up this process. But I like to do this by hand and test and check the surface as I go. Just make sure that you use a fresh bucket of clean water every time you change grades of paper, otherwise you won't get out the scratches that you previously made on the surface. Once you finish wet polishing, you should have gotten rid of all the mold release and scum that's left over from the concrete curing. This will leave you with a nice, consistent and clean surface. So you can see now the worktop is looking pretty nice, it's completely dry, um, but there are a few voids that we need to fill. On the top, this is pretty much the only area with voids. You can see these little holes here, we're going to fill them with cement slurry, matching the colour of the worktop itself, using the same amount of pigment that we used in the worktop. And then you can see along the sides here, we have a few holes. So we're going to sort that out and then the worktop is going to be ready to seal. Here I'm just creating a cement slurry paste with 14% pigment and pure cement. This is much easier to do than calculating how much cement is actually in the concrete as we did before. The easiest thing to do is just push it in with your fingers. And then wipe it off and it should leave the surface smooth. So I've now left that to dry for about three hours and I'm happy now that it's dry enough to put the sealer on. So I'm using this H Seal product. It's food safe, it gives a matte finish to give the most natural look of the concrete. It's waterproof, high temperature, so you can use it for outdoor barbecues and it's UV resistant. So I'm gonna be putting three layers on, 10 minutes in between to make sure it's fully soaked into the surface and I'll show you a test after it's finished to show you how waterproof it is. <music> Layer number two. Layer number three. A few moments later. So there we go. That is the finished result. You can see the matte finish is reflecting the light, but it's sort of dim, um, and it's got a nice marbled sort of chalky effect. And you can see the sheen across the surface is really consistent. So. Definitely recommend this sealer. I'll put a link in the description for it so you can find it yourself. It's the only one that I found for this specific application. So um, check it out, try it out yourself, tell me what you think. So guys, thank you so much for watching if you've watched this far. And just a quick message before I do the water test, I'm actually making these concrete worktops for UK customers and UK subscribers. If you want to be one, then you can send an email to me below. I can make you a custom worktop. I can do any shade, any color, any finish you want. I can even do knockouts for taps, cutouts for sinks, and you can possibly even see it being made on YouTube. This is actually for an eBay customer called Rich. So Rich, if you're watching, thank you very much for your order. So send an email to me below in the description and I'll now do the water test and you can see how good it is. So see you soon.